seems a long time ago. On the 24th of April, we started. We had 150 people from all over the world come, put them on buses, sent them to nine different places. They spent two nights and then came back. We had a, a tire puncture from one bus. Bus got stuck in the mud and had to be pushed out. Uh, fortunately, those were the worst of the disasters, so we didn't have a major disaster. As I said to the people who, uh, when they started the evening before they went off in the field, I told them what our criteria for marking or evaluating a successful field visit was. It was a combination of self-evaluation and evaluation by the participants, marking out of 10, for 10 being the best, and the self-evaluation is 9 out of 10 for everybody coming back safely. So we self-evaluate, if everybody came back safely, we get 9 out of 10. And then the participants can evaluate with the 1, they can give us a half, they can give us 0.1, they can give us 0. It doesn't really matter. As long as everybody comes back safely, we are very happy. And I'm fortunate uh, to say, very glad to say that they, they all did. Uh, we, during that field visit, we also heard of the very uh, tragic uh, earthquake in Nepal. We had a good group of people here from Nepal. Last year we were in Nepal at almost the same dates uh, uh, at CBA 8. And so it was a tragic incident. Fortunately, the immediate families of our participants here were all safe. Some of them have actually gone back early. A few have been uh, uh, stayed uh, till the end. And all of our uh, heartfelt sympathy goes out to our Nepali friends uh, in Nepal and those who are still here with us. After we had the field visits and the, and the people came back, we then had a formal opening with about 400 people. We have uh, approximately 400 people from 90 countries represented this time. It's the biggest gathering we've had so far. In Nepal, we had 300 plus. Um, we had an opening by uh, Dr. Judy Wakungu, the Cabinet Secretary for Environment and Natural Resources of the Government of Kenya, formally opened it. We had the Vice Chair of the IPCC, Jean Pascal Ipercel, give us a very a uh, good scientific overview of the fifth assessment report. We gave a 10-minute uh, presentation of a two and two and a half thousand word report, uh, and he did it very, very well. Uh, we had the ambassador from Ireland. Uh, we had a representative from the African Development Bank. We had uh, Stephen and, and Salatun from uh, the Medungi Trust. We're very happy to see them here as well. Um, and then in the evening, we had a, a reception and a cultural show hosted by the government of Kenya uh, and with uh, Alice Kaudia representing the government at that occasion. We had Ibrahim Thiao at the opening from UNEP and we had Keith Alverson at the dinner. So a, a, a large number of social events and then we had a conference with plenaries. We had 24 sessions, plenaries and parallel sessions on different topics ranging from monitoring and evaluation obviously, which is a theme for this meeting, ecosystem-based adaptation and a variety of other subjects. We played games. We had some fun playing games with our friends from the Red Cross Center who are uh, been developing all kinds of games for us. Uh, we had two nights of video sessions, sharing videos and, and evaluating the videos as well, having discussions around them. Uh, and then we had a, a, a lot of social media, twittering, tweeting. Uh, I'm told that we had over 5,000 tweets and we had several hundred people around the world following us in real time on the website. Uh, we've been doing video logs and uploading them regularly and the, a lot of people around the world have been watching and I've been receiving uh, messages from people around the world uh, who have been watching us. So that, that uh, I think, is something we can be proud of. That is, even though we have 400 people here in Nairobi, there are many other 100 people outside Kenya who have been following us in real time as well. Um, the second last thing I want to do is to share some innovative things. We, every time we do these conferences, we try and do something new and different. The two things I would say that have been new and different out of this one is firstly a focus on private sector. We have never been able to engage with the private sector effectively on community-based adaptation. I think this time we made a special effort. We had the private sector, we had KEPSA from Kenya, uh, very much involved, a very good session on private sector, and they have decided to take this forward. So one of the outcomes that uh, from this conference is that the private sector in Kenya are working with others, government and non-government actors, and they're going to take forward the concept of community-based adaptation involving the private sector. And, and here uh, we have to remember the definition that I think reminded us of. The private sector includes every farmer in the country, every fisherman in the country, every little stallholder. By private sector, we're not just talking conglomerates of large-scale uh, industries. They are all private sector. Um, 
The other innovation I would say, uh, and I'm happy to announce, is a, a follow-up bilateral South-South cooperation between Kenya and Bangladesh. The government of Kenya and the government of Bangladesh representatives who were here had discussions while they were here. Uh, acts in Nairobi and uh, my center in Bangladesh will be facilitating this, but we are planning to have a group of Kenyans go to Bangladesh and a group of Bangladeshis come to Kenya without any donor involvement. They, they will resource it themselves and they will initiate a collaborative South-South collaboration on climate change, tackling climate change by government, non-government organizations, academia, media, youth, etc. So we, we'll have a multi-stakeholder group from each country coming to the other country and, and developing collaborative activities that they can take forward in future. Something we've not done before, it's, it's an innovation in this case. And finally, we try to, and so just one other thing about outputs coming out of this conference, we will have proceedings, which we normally do, which captures the discussions that we have. We are also planning to do uh, a special issue of a journal where we have invited uh, applications or proposals to write papers. Uh, you have another few days, I would say no longer than a week, uh, to send in your proposals if you want to write a chapter or a paper. We will look at that and then we will get back to you and you'll have six months to write the paper and send us uh, your manuscript if you're interested. Um, and then the most important thing, which is the final thing that I'll share with you, is a declaration uh, from this uh, uh, conference uh, that is aimed at the wider world, at the media, uh, and in particular uh, to the government of Kenya on behalf of this uh, meeting. And I'll, uh, I'll hand it over to the official representative uh, after I read it. So I'm now going to read the Nairobi Declaration on Community-Based Adaptation to Climate Change. From April 27 to 30, 2015, over 400 representatives from governments, civil society, the scientific community, international and national non-governmental organizations and communities gathered in Nairobi, Kenya at the 9th International Conference on Community-Based Adaptation to Climate Change. CBA, is a participatory, community-led, environmentally sustainable approach to adaptation that aims to strengthen the resilience of poor and vulnerable communities. At CBA 9, participants discussed methods for measuring the effectiveness of adaptation to climate change, climate variability and change for the poorest and most vulnerable. Based on discussions, lessons learned and outcomes of this conference, Participants of the CBA present in the Nairobi present the Nairobi Declaration, which states the importance of addressing the needs and interests of the poorest and most vulnerable in international agreements on sustainable development, development finance, and climate change. <coughs> climate change has and will continue to have disproportionately negative consequences for the poor and vulnerable. These groups are already adapting and enhancing their resilience to the adverse effects of climate change. It is the responsibility of developed countries to support the adaptation efforts of poor and vulnerable groups. To this end, governments should promote approaches to climate change adaptation that build the capacity of local actors. They should also ensure that vulnerable groups are included in the process of development goals, strategies for implementation, indicators, and evaluative frameworks for adaptation. Consistent with the 2014 Kathmandu Declaration agreed at CBA 8 last year, the CBA com community reiterates the importance of securing additional, adequate, and transparent adaptation financing, especially for community-level adaptation efforts. Global agreements must increase and accelerate finance for adaptation in poor and vulnerable communities and establish transparent mechanisms for monitoring adaptation finance. Governments should prioritize the needs and interests of the poorest and most vulnerable in their national adaptation planning processes and provide clear, timely, and accurate reporting on the extent to which adaptation finances reaches the most vulnerable groups. Finally, world leaders will meet this year to draft agreements on sustainable development goals, financing for development, and climate change under the UNFCCC. Leaders must ensure that these agreements reflect the needs and interests of the poorest and most vulnerable communities. Local, regional, and national governments should also incorporate the principles of inclusiveness, community leadership, and environmental sustainability into all of their plans for adaptation 
and development.